What's up guys, Donnie B here. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at the newest Galaxy device from Samsung, the S24 Ultra. Before we get into it though, I have to admit, I'm gonna do my best to not be biased, but I'm probably gonna be a little bit biased. I've been a long time daily driver of Galaxy devices, but to no one's surprise, this thing is absolutely amazing. And it's nice to see Samsung open up to the help of Google with some of the software features and try not to do so much the typical Samsung way. There's also the promise of seven years of OS updates. Now, I love the idea of being able to use a phone for longer, but I'm not really sold on this just yet. I'm not so sure that the hardware will be able to keep up with seven years of OS updates. Picture trying to use the S7 with Android 15 or the, I, the iPhone 7 with iOS 18. It's not ideal, but hopefully they prove me wrong. Comment below if you think this is a good thing or a gimmick, and while you're down there, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. It's pretty obvious at this point that Samsung has found a design language that they plan to stick with. Now, going the way of the fruit, I believe that this may actually be a good thing. I know, I know, now hear me out. I do miss when we used to get a new design every two years, but them sticking with the same model, there's more budget for software and hardware development. It's not totally identical as its predecessor. This year we have a titanium frame, they've added a 50 megapixel five times telephoto, and the display is completely flat with the bezels being the thinnest I've ever seen on a smartphone. Really, these things are microscopic. The display is still a 120 Hertz Quad HD, but this time it has a peak brightness of 2600 nits. The brightness is nice, but what really makes this thing shine is Corning's newest anti-reflective Gorilla Glass armor. They claim it's four times more scratch resistant, and that's cool and all, but really, just look how well this thing does in direct sunlight. You will have no issues with reflections whether you're indoors or out. Look at the difference under the studio light between this and the S23 Ultra. It's truly incredible. Usually I have a pretty tough time filming any phone with the reflections, but this one has been significantly easier. It also still has the under display ultrasonic fingerprint reader, but this year is the fastest yet thanks to the new reader for the first time since 2021. One thing that I noticed when you're setting up your fingerprint, the actual circle that guides you moves around rather than it just saying move your finger to the left or move your finger to the right. The entire process is much easier and much more precise. Storage options are still 256 and 512 gigs and one terabyte options, but memory is now 12 gigs across the board. There's also up to eight gigs of virtual RAM that they call RAM Plus. Side note, this was turned on by default and set to eight gigs. RAM Plus has two, four, six, and eight gig options, and it pretty much just takes from your storage to add to your memory. Now, honestly, I've yet to see the difference whether this setting is turned on or off, but one thing I couldn't help but notice is the amount of processing power coming from the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. Excuse me, the 8 Gen 3 4 Galaxy which is claiming a 20% boost in CPU performance and a 26% boost in graphics. And judging by these benchmarks, I would say that's about right. But higher clock speeds are not the only trick it has up its sleeve. It now has what they're calling Gen AI that gives support for, you guessed it, generative AI. But we'll cover all that in just a few. The battery is still a 5,000 milliamp hour, and honestly, I've not been able to see what real world use would be like because my screen on time has been ridiculous since I've gotten it. What I can vouch for though is with resolution at its highest as well as refresh rate and adaptive brightness, I'm usually sitting at about 30% battery at bedtime after a solid six hours of screen on time. I have no doubts that if you really wanted to, you could easily get two full days of battery by changing just a few settings. My opinion though, you're gonna charge it every night anyway, you might as well crank that thing up and enjoy what the latest and greatest tech has to offer. Oh, and the recharge speed is up to 45 watts wired and 15 watts wireless. Usually takes about an hour from empty. Also, I've noticed that the 45 watts is not from start to finish. It's usually around 30 watts at the halfway point and finishes around 20. And you won't be able to get those speeds with the cable that comes with the box. The best you can do with that, I believe, is 25 watts. But thanks to the battery management, it's still pretty respectable recharge time. Let's talk a little bit about the outside of the phone and then we'll get into the cameras. 
The sides are now titanium, and thanks to Jerry Rig Everything, we now know that it's very low-grade titanium, but it's still titanium nonetheless. Along the right side, we still have the power button, volume rocker, and 5G antenna. The bottom, you'll find the SIM tray, USB-C, and the S-Pen. The S-Pen is one of those things that you either use it all the time or hardly at all. Personally, I'm a note taker, have been for years. I physically write all my daily goals, video ideas, and shopping lists. I carried a notepad and pen for the longest time, so for me the S Pen has been great, especially being able to take notes right from the lock screen. And using it as a shutter button for the camera has been huge. Using the timer is now a thing of the past. All right, hot take. The 10 times telephoto on the S23 Ultra was not that good. I mean, it was cool to be able to reach out, but the image was never really that impressive. The three times was a completely different story. A little behind the scenes action is I took every thumbnail last year for this channel with the three times telephoto on the S23 Ultra. So when I heard that they were ditching the 10 times 10 megapixel for a five times 50 megapixel, I was like, let's go. And you can even use it in portrait mode. Definitely a step in the right direction. Here are a few comparison shots between the two, and I even tried to throw a curveball and include the iPhone 15 Pro Max 5x telephoto, but by the time I got that thing into my computer, it had been compressed and compressed, and well, we'll just forget that even happened. The main camera is still 200 megapixels. There have been some improvements in sharpness and clarity. Not sure if this is being done via software or if the sensor is actually just processing the information better. It's achieving the 200 megapixels by binning 12 and a half megapixels, which is what it's set to by default. They have made it easier though to toggle through the resolution by having it right there in the camera UI. You can select between 12, 50, and 200 megapixels. You would think, at least in my simple mind, that 200 is the way to go at all times, but that's just not the case. It's easy to get caught up in the numbers, but the bottom line is that cameras capture light. The lower the megapixel, the larger they are and able to gather more light. Readout speeds are faster and low light is better. Honestly, I don't think that 90% of people would even be able to tell the difference between the three. Then you have the 12 megapixel ultra wide or what the kids call 0.6. That is the 13 millimeter equivalent and the front facing selfie camera is also still the same as last year at 12 megapixel. One area that I have noticed a huge improvement is with shutter lag. As someone who shoots a lot of sports photography, sometimes you just want to grab your phone and snap one, but Samsung has always been notorious about that laggy shutter button. It's still not perfect, but it is way better than it used to be. Going through some of the camera modes, the images you get straight out of portrait mode are great. The white balance for the most part is neutral and the colors are precise. Detail is good when in bright light, but it tends to break apart a bit the darker it gets but is still usable in most low light situations. Portrait mode is where it's at though. And remember when I said that the 50 megapixel five time zoom can do portrait? Yep, that's the bread and butter. The edge detection is the best I've seen even compared to the pixel. And it always seems to prioritize exposure on my face. Video stabilization has gotten even better this time around with what seems almost gimbal like thanks to the combination of optical and electronic stabilization. And 8K now not only shoots 24 or 30 frames per second, but is actually quite usable. I still think it's a bit of a gimmick though, and the file sizes are massive. If this video can get one like, I will try to record and upload a true 8K video. It might only be a few minutes though, since that's probably all my good old Galaxy Book Odyssey could probably handle. Slow motion now has true 4K 120, and dual record will record both the front facing and the main rear camera at the same time. I did notice that they got rid of the director's view. I actually used that quite a bit on the S23 Ultra to get an idea of what focal length I wanted to use. For those of you that don't remember, that's when it would show you the feed of every camera at the same time, and you could pick which one had priority. There is still single take that will record all of them at once, but it just doesn't show you the feed. For those of you that like to take full control of your camera, there's Pro Video that gives you access to all of your settings, including which microphone you want to use, and you can even monitor your audio. One of the biggest things you can do to improve video is have good audio because we watch with our ears. The audio coming straight out of the camera is not just usable, it's outright good. And I was blown away with how well it did in the wind.
it's super windy so i figured it'd be a good time to uh, do an audio test on the s24 ultra like right now the wind is blowing pretty steady in my face so this is the front facing microphone with the selfie camera and probably i don't know maybe 10 mile an hour wind so you know i, I don't know how it sounds but all the other tests I've done sounds pretty good. So look, you can see how much the wind's blowing just about my hair. So this is the audio that you can expect with the S24 Ultra with the front facing camera and microphone. And now we're gonna switch around to the back. So this is the audio that you can expect with the rear facing main camera on the S24 Ultra. Like I said, pretty significant wind blowing directly into my face. So uh, I don't know, the audio sounds pretty good on all the other tests that I've done. So how's it sound on here? Let me know. In the comments below do you think you can get away with using their internal audio on the s24 ultra or should i be using something like the dji mic and this is not hooked up to that by the way this is also let me know in the comments if you would rather see a comparison between this and the s23 ultra or the pixel 8 pro all right last but not least and probably what most people are excited about galaxy ai samsung never really calls it artificial intelligence they're calling it advanced intelligence in the settings menu I guess they figured that AI still scares a lot of people, and honestly, I get it. As someone who gets paid for photography, it absolutely scares me to death. Not that I won't be able to continue to do it, because what people don't know is I would absolutely do it for free. I love it that much. But the art of photography will lose its value, its meaning, the significance of capturing a moment. I tell people all the time that I'm like a time traveler. I can take you back to a point in time with just one image. And I fear that all that is just slowly slipping away with generative fill and chat GPT prompts. Now that you know how I feel about it, I gotta tell you, it's pretty cool. Some of it feels like a gimmick and some of it downright useful. I'll let you decide which is which. For starters, all of the Galaxy AI features can only be found in Samsung apps such as the browser and gallery with the exception of messages. And that's because Google Messages is now the default messenger app. So if you're dead set on using Chrome or Google Photos, then maybe one day these features will come. One of the ones I believe to be the most useful and the one that I use the most is Circle to Search. This one is not limited to Samsung apps either. It can be done on any screen in any app. By holding down the home button, you can now draw a circle around anything on the screen and it will Google search whatever it is, literally whatever it is. You can circle an article of clothing or a ring someone is wearing at the Grammys. It doesn't matter. It pretty much does exactly what Google Lens does, but removes all the extra steps of having to either take a photo or screenshot, then opening the app. Super simple and super useful. In the messaging app, you now have the option to translate, check your grammar and spelling, or choose between different writing styles. By tapping on the three stars icon at the top left of the keyboard, you can choose between the three. I personally have not had any opportunity to test the translation feature, but the spelling and grammar check are a huge asset to the next generation when they LMAO or LOL, when they actually have to type a resume or reply to a business email. My kids know better than to send me a text that rambles on without a comma or a period, and I'll roast them for days for it. The different writing styles is, well, certainly different. Not really sure how I feel about sounding like a completely different person with a click of a button, but it's here now, we might as well embrace it. In Samsung Internet Browser, you can now summarize an entire web page down to just a few short paragraphs or translate it into any other language. You can even do both at the same time. Now we can move on to what most people are excited about, generative AI. Some of these features really are incredibly useful, like being able to turn any video into slow motion just by long pressing the screen. AI figures out what frames need to be generated and fills in the gaps, and does a pretty dang good job. There were a few cases where it looked a little wonky, like this video of Chooch trying to get a piece of food out of his water. See how the water looks a little artificial? But this shot of a duck wagging his tail, you would never even know that this wasn't shot at 120 frames per second. Moving over to photos, this is where it gets impressive. Now, none of this is new. We all saw this when the Pixel 8 was released, but Samsung has really refined it along with the help of the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. Going into the Edit tab, you're greeted with the same AI logo. When you tap this, you can either tap or draw a line around anything in the image. It does a really good job of knowing what you're trying to outline, 
even if there's something in front of the subject. Look how it selects around the tree limbs when I circle this cardinal. After you made a selection, you can either move it or delete it from the image. Then generative AI will fill in the void. I even tested it in a nighttime photo to see if it would be able to fill in behind this Valentine's Day heart. It deleted it like it was never even there. All of this does take some time and needs an internet connection. I did test this by turning on airplane mode and try to do an edit. It would allow me to select or move or erase, but not generative fill. And not all of the Galaxy AI features require a connection, only the photo editing features. All of the translation features are on device. You can literally translate another language offline anywhere in the world. And to me, that kind of makes all this worth it. All right, that's going to do it for this one. There really is so many features on the S24 Ultra, it's hard to break it all down into just one video. So I'm gonna try to do a separate video on the camera test and whatnot, but you can let me know if you found any of this helpful by leaving a comment or hitting the like button below. I'm curious to know, where do you stand with all this new AI stuff? Is it helpful? Is it a gimmick? I'm kind of somewhere in the middle. Either way, it's here. We might as well embrace it. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. As always, take care of yourselves. You know you deserve it. I'm Donnie B, and we'll see you on the next one. Peace. Oh, 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 oh,